Fitness with your host, Pobler Gunner, and I'm here to talk nerdy to you about fitness stuff, nerdy stuff, and what that means essentially is like the workouts I did for four weeks, as well as the food I ate, whether it was good or bad, mostly healthy, and the nerdy things that I did. So movies, music, shows, comics, anime, video games, all that stuff. That's what I'm going to be discussing with you here and now and showing you a little bit of it as well because I did something a little bit different this month. So this month I went, I changed things up and I didn't change things up necessarily because I preordained to do things differently, but more so because of the fact that I, winter hit, it hit pretty hard. It was cold. I, my body went into full hibernation mode. I did not want to get up any day of the week early, and so I stopped doing my early workouts almost all together. So I started doing just weights, so I was no cardio, even if I did get up, I got up late, so I wasn't doing as long of workouts. I was just doing what I, I was just changing it up to just weights, so I was hitting it mostly just weights. Now before shift stuff, still cardio. But I was changing to like doing abs, forearms, you know, calves, similar to the previous month. But the previous month I was doing cardio. This time it was nothing but weights. So I'm going to go into some of these workouts. Now biceps, I have these things, alternating hold curls. Now I have these, essentially you hold them out like this, slowly, and you hold them, okay? I learned this from a buddy, Glenn. So those are probably the best, the best forearm and bicep workouts I have ever learned in my life okay like that's I, I've done a lot of other things and it's the only thing that hits both of these really really well 10 10 pounds is all you really need I I have gotten higher to to 15 I might be able to do 20 but that's the thing is once you start going higher your form sucks and your arms start to bend the point is to keep them straight out I usually do it standing I'm just doing it sitting just to as an example. So that's what I do for alternating hold curls. Like I said, it's dumbbells. Now, angle curls. These are similar, but now it's just at an angle and here. So it's like out to the side angle, boom. It's a really solid pump. I feel that one pretty well. That one, obviously, you can step that one up in weight because it's a little bit easier, but you're doing them both at the same time, trying to go down as far as you can and back up. You don't want to completely let but you want to have that that hold right there once again. You don't want it completely, you don't want to like laying it down on your side. You want that suspension right there. You want that tension. Then I also have alternating twist curls. Those are pretty basic. Boom, boom. I usually do that standing, but I'm just making an example right here. And then there's also hammer curls just at the side and like this, okay? You can do them alternating if you want to, and that's something that I also make want to make apparent is every single time I change these workouts, these bicep workouts, the weight goes up, okay? At least five pounds, if not more, because each of these get easier. So alternating hold curls, 10. Angle curls, 15. Alternating twist curls, 20. 25 with the hammer curls. And, and so you should build up. You should add more weight. So start at 15 the next month you know, and keep on going up. And then calf raises, I have all kinds of calf raises, core abs. You can find a lot of this stuff you'll find on the website, which is at TNTM, the show for this. There'll be a link in the description. If you click it, it'll go there. So if you wanna look more into it, pull downs, calf raises, those are pretty simple too. There's like three there you do. So that was essentially my workouts. Uh, there's a variation. The specifics are on the website, so check out the website if you want to see the specifics. And so for food, I had breakfast burritos, of course, always. It's great because I have my eggs, I have my cheese, and I have usually something else in there, like some kind of meat, you know. So it's good. You have the bread, you got your carbs, especially, you know, if I'm going to go need a lot of energy and stuff like that and then ch cheese you you are you should have at least a little amount of fat it makes you feel full too not a lot just a little bit 
That's just like the food pyramid. You gotta have that the little fats at the top. Okay. Just a tad. And then, but the main basis is the protein, the egg. Eggs have a lot, so like three, I think like three eggs, yeah, I want to say is about 20 grams of protein, I want to say. So anyways, uh, then I had lemon chicken, and essentially that's like chicken thighs, I think it was chicken thighs, and I just seasoned it with lemon, threw it in the oven, only takes like 45 minutes to an hour, easy. Au gratin potatoes, I know those were something my wife made. Uh, Manzano, which is apple, so I had apples. Sesame chicken and beef fried rice. My wife got from Best Lee's. I'm, I'm eating her leftovers because she doesn't eat leftovers usually. Sweet potato, which was probably from Roadhouse, if I had to guess. It was, once again, she got me that. It was her leftovers. Like, she didn't eat it. She got it specifically for me, and so I ate that. Then, uh, tortilla burger from Applebee's. I think that's their... Tortilla burger is the best thing that they have, and probably the best tortilla burger that I've had. Prove me wrong. Uh, yeah, I've had breakfast sandwiches because I think I ran out of tortillas. Uh, steak and rice, chicken salad, of course Thanksgiving leftovers because it was this was way back in November, and then Dion's because my wife's obsessed. Well, I don't know. I don't. I don't know if my wife's obsessed with. Dion's. She used to work at Dion's, so like it's a go-to. It's an easy go-to. I personally. I, I like their pizza when it's fresh, but it's not good reheated because the crust gets really, really dense or really hard. Like, it hurts your teeth. That's all I know is that the, the, it's just horrible to eat refreshed because it hurts your teeth. It hurts my teeth. So anyways, uh, and then once again, chicken teriyaki rice bowl. Now, that was something pre, pre-done pre that I get at Costco, and it's an easy make, especially when I work a double you know, boom, that's ready to go. And then I also tried this thing called Grays. And they're snacks they send to you. They're like, what kind of things do you like? Blah, 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 blah. And then they send them to you. They had the free thing. And then they, they I was like, I'm just going to cancel it. And then they were well, like, oh, cheap deal. And I was like, yeah, I'm a cheapo. I'll go for a good deal. So I kept that kept on going for a while. But some of them tasted really weird. So, and it's one of those things where it's like, you just have to try it and see what you like. And I'm allergic to certain things, like mildly allergic and so I was like, nah, I don't, I don't think I like just taking these risks and stuff. So I'm good. So yeah, that's essentially what I ate. Now for musica, I uh, listened to uh, BB Rexa Expectations, phenomenal album, mind blowing, superb. Every almost every single song I love. There might be like one where I'm not completely in love with it. There's just such a great variety of songs on there. Uh, I, I love them all. Ferrari, I love that. Uh, there's another song on there. Uh, it's like Don't Get Too Close or something like that. Legit sounds like a James Bond song. Like I listen to it and I'm like, this could totally be a James Bond intro music. You know, it, it would be perfect. Or, or any spy, you know, like it just would be perfect for it. It's so great. So yeah, it's a phenomenal album. Make sure you check it out. I also was listening to Silverstein and Hawthorne Heights because... Slay J and I went to check out a concert around that time where they played together. I mean, not not at the exact same time, I don't think, but one after another. Silverstein was having like their 15th anniversary for their first album, When Broken is Easily Fixed, and so they played their entire first album, and then they played their other hits and the new stuff. It was a really long concert. We literally, like, our ears were ringing because they just kept on turning up the volume. It was insane. Hawthorne Heights, absolutely love them. They're phenomenal. I also started watching or listening to Rihanna because I did watch Ocean's 8, and I was like, I'm going to listen to Rihanna, and she was a cool character in that, and I was like, I'm going to check her out her music and see how good it is. Not impressed. I was not impressed. So I was, I was, I was like, uh, she's decent. Like, she's no... It's weird that I'm like, uh, BB Rex is solid, and I feel like... Rihanna's just putting out like club hits kind of but not and I, I don't see how like BB Rexa is not like on the same level or better or or more popular than Rihanna where I'm like this this music just does not have the content like it's just not thick you know like it's just not it, it does it's not rich you know and flavorful and deep the way that uh, BB Rexa music is so for me I'm just like uh, yeah, it's it's okay. She's like mediocre at best. Then I also hardcore got into Kendrick Lamar. I will legit say like he's probably my favorite rapper over the last decade. 
I think he's absolutely phenomenal and superb. I listened to Section 8-0 or Section Point Eight Zero. That's a phenomenal album. And also To Pimp a Butterfly, both phenomenal albums, mind-blowing, superb, very deep, great messages. Like, this guy, he's just killer. Like, I, I, I listen to it and I go, this is West Coast rap. Like, what I used to lo- listen to back in the day, but new and updated. I love it. I also listened to Lady Antebellum, the album Need You Now, as well as the song. I think it's the song and the album it's named after. Phenomenal album. I, I really love Lady Antebellum. I think she's, she, her band, her group, because it's a whole group. It's like, she's the main singer, but there's also the dude singer, and they're the most of the band is dudes, but uh, yeah. So, phenomenal group all together. Uh, I also was listening to Rolling Stones, and was really disappointed. I was like, I don't get why they're so big and they're such a big deal. Like, I listen to multiple albums and I'm like, where are the hits? Like, I'd be like, I think this is a hit, but it doesn't sound like a hit because I don't really care for it that much. Like, I was like, I I feel like probably their first album is is one of their best. And, And I don't know. I just was like, I don't understand. I just don't get it. I, I love classic rock, and I just couldn't get into them. Like I was listening there, and I'm just like, I don't, I don't see it. They even have like a, uh, they even have like a Sgt. Pepper and the Lonely Hearts Band ripoff album, and I'm like, this, this is a ripoff album, like legit, but not nearly as good. I don't, I don't know, I don't get it. If you do, please tell me because I don't, I don't get it. And then for movies and shows, uh, I really got into My Hero Academia season two. I don't think I finished it, but I was binging it pretty hard. It's just one of those things that, for me, I really only watch movies and shows at work unless they're in the theater. Because I go, like, I can't watch movies at, in the theater at work, obviously, uh, unless I watch, like, some crappy ripoff version, which I won't do. That's what I'll do. Whereas, if I'm at work, hey, you know, and I and I have nothing going on, that's what I'll do. And so that's also based on if I'm alone or not. And so I can watch whatever I want if I'm not paired up with somebody else. And there's no way that, like, I don't know anybody else at work that wants to watch My Hero Academia that's on season two. So what are the chances? So I don't think I finished it, but it's phenomenal. Most of it, that's the one where, like, you see them fighting. They have, like, this arena tournament thing. Like, it was pretty legit. It's really, really cool. You have to check it out. And like all these different like obstacle courses, it's it's phenomenal. I love it. It is so great. So definitely a must see without a doubt. I also watched the Gabriel Iglesias "Forgive Me for What I Said When I Was Hungry," which I don't think he actually said that in that special. It was a Netflix special, and actually that was a group of guys were watching it. I saw like the end of it, and I was like, that was pretty funny. I've never really gotten into this guy. You think I would, considering you know support a fellow Latino? Uh, but I was like, okay, I'll watch this dude. He was actually really funny. I was like, that's some solid content. I watched it with another, another dude. And he was like, yeah, this is funny stuff. So it was, it's a really solid, I was, I was pretty impressed. He was, he was pretty good. Not too dirty, a little dirty, but not too dirty. And then BB Rexa. I just watched, like, I've been watching tons of, I w- at the time I was watching tons of BB Rexa. I still watch as much BB Rexa as I can, but on YouTube, like interviews, her doing radio shows, all kinds of stuff. She's just I think she's great. She's really funny, interesting, uh, of course, attractive. Uh, and so, yeah, she's great. Like I said, I lis- I watched Ocean's 8, and I was really impressed with that movie, too. I was like, I had no intentions on watching it, but I was paired up with this girl. She threw it on, and I was like, wow, that was so... Honestly, I think that's way better than the other Ocean's movies. I'm like, they should have done this way sooner. Like, this is way more interesting than any of those other ones like I got bored with the other ones these ones this one was so good like it was ridiculous like how good it was I was like wow this is great like I hope they really have a sequel this was superb uh Sandra Bullock is still knocking it out of the park a lot of those actresses just killer job they did a killer job on that there's some stuff is a little predictable so it's not like the greatest movie ever made but I'm just saying it's I think it's better than the other Oceans movies. You know, on that level, I think it's the best one. I also watched uh, Killer Elite, which is a Jason Statham movie where he's an elite killer. He leaves the business and Robert De Niro, he is still in the business and he ends up getting set up. And I think it actually takes place like in the in the 80s or something. I don't know. It's it's 
It was, uh, he has to, like, take out all these, uh, SAS guys, like the, the British Secret Service, I think, or whatever, guys, uh, to get his friend back. And it's, it's pretty crazy. It's pretty awesome. It's, it's pretty nuts. It was pretty well done. I, I'm not a huge Statham fan just because, well, he seems like an arrogant a-hole, but, uh, the movie was pretty solid. And then Play It Cool, I watched Play It Cool, uh, Venom. Venom. I've been watching a lot of Conan O'Brien. But first, as lastly, lastly, I want to get into Venom, okay? I know a lot of people were like, oh my god, Venom, that's so good. You know why? You know why you thought it was so good? Because where your expectations were way down here. Because you're like, oh, it's a Sony movie? And they're doing a Spider-Verse movie? Like, it's Venom, but Sony's doing it? Your exp expectations were way down here. Okay, now I'm gonna be honest. My expectations weren't down there because I heard that it was a solid movie, okay? So they're in the middle, all right? They were in the middle. They didn't, they definitely didn't exceed those. In fact, they still fell below. You had low expectations, they met those low expectations. I had these minimum, well, these middle ones, the movie was way down here, okay? And here's the my biggest problem. Like, it wasn't even that, like, Eddie Brock was bad or like it, it the, the story was very slow like I felt like you kind of the movie should have started kind of with the ending where it's like him in the suit like they should have kind of like not, not, not rushed it but gotten to the point where he was working with Venom they were Venom that felt like the beginning of the movie to me and I was like oh yeah it was you know it just took forever to get to that point so that there's that there's also the the biggest problem that i have with it is that the main villain is a symbiote and takes over like these people and jumps from people to people and one of them is he jumps to he it's well it's really dumb because he he he's he takes over of course j jonas and uh, jonah jameson's son first and uh because he's hurt he jumps to the ambulance driver or something like that but then he has the ambulance driver wreck and it's like it didn't make sense because then he gets that host to walk all the way into a city to an airport then transfer to a little girl to fly to like san francisco or something like that and i'm like this doesn't make sense you know why this doesn't make sense this doesn't make sense because of the fact that first of all the symbiote gets information from the host. Like, you read the host, you get the host's memories, essentially. You get the information from them. So it would know that even with a damaged J. Jonas Jameson son, uh, I forget what his name is, but anyways, he would know, hey, I'm in a vehicle, and this vehicle is taking me to the hospital where there are people. And instead of taking over another host and walking all the way into the city, Okay, it would have just gotten them there sooner if you would have just stayed or took in control of the driver and then, hey, driver information, get to the hospital. Hey, there's tons of people there. I'm going to take control of a doctor. Doctors travel, okay, and they have big money, so it wouldn't be out of the realm to go, I'm going to take over a doctor, and this doctor is going to fly over to San Francisco. Instead, takes over this person, has him walk into the city, then takes over... Then goes it to an airport, takes over a little girl. Who's where are the parents? How is this little girl traveling on her own in from one country to another? It doesn't make sense. It's stupid. And why would you take control of a little girl that's not a viable host anyways? So it it just like I was like, that's stupid. Not to mention that if they would have stated kind of like the mission of this symbiote at the beginning of the movie, which is, hey, get to this place place so that you can shoot off into space and then bring all the symbiotes to this planet to take over the whole planet that was the end game but that you didn't know that you're just like you just see this this random symbiote switching bodies uh and then you're like and then at the end you're like oh okay all right and so it was just and and the fight scenes were not that great because it was just like you just see like these clashing goo monsters essentially like slicing at each other and you're like they look way too similar for me to know who's who i don't know who to root for i don't know what's going on it just wasn't i was not impressed i thought what was going to happen is that because they teased all these other symbiotes i was like oh he's gonna have to like take down like each symbiote and each one's gonna be a little more difficult a little bit harder to fight and everything like that 
No, that and then he's gonna have to fight the final boss at the end or like the whole army at the end. Nope, that wasn't the case. They're just kind of like, oh, well, you're just introducing these other symbiotes for no reason at all. It was stupid. It was really dumb. Like, it wasn't horribly done. Like, overall, like, the acting was pretty solid. It was funny. It was interesting. But I was like, man, like, it's it's just not... It was way overhyped. Even to the point where, like, people were like, yeah, it's pretty solid. Even at a mediocre level, that's overhyping it way too much because it was way down here still. I'm, I'm like, I, there's a teaser. I'm going to spoiler alert. There's a teaser for Carnage at the end of the movie which is Woody Harrelson, and he looks absolutely ridiculous. And I was like, this is going to be ridiculous and stupid. Uh, so, yeah, it's it's like, what? It just, it, I, I just thought it was, it was badly, it was badly done. Like, it, it just, yeah. I the, the Stan Lee moments were amazing, I will say. Like, that stuff was superb. Made me tear up a little because it was after he passed away, not when it came out. I think when the Venom movie came out, he was still alive, but when I saw it, it the, yes, this was still in theaters, but it was like still a little, I, it was after he passed away, so he was pretty emotional. Uh, anyways, yeah, it is, it, I, I, yeah, definitely not worth seeing in theaters. I was, I was pretty disappointed with it. And, and only because I thought it would be a mediocre movie. Not, not great, but just mediocre, and it still didn't meet my expectations. I was like, yeah, I, I would not, I would not, yeah. Nope. It, it was... It, I felt like it was still a waste of my time. For videojuegos, video games, I played Mass Effect 2, Rise of the Tomb Raider, as well as Kingdom Hearts RE Coded Memories, which is probably one of the worst games I've played. It's a card-based, uh, turn-based, slash real-time-based... It's a cluster, is what it is, and it's really annoying, especially because there's a certain part... That if you're not leveled up enough, you just can't go back and level up more. You, it's just not possible. And then you just like, you just, there's no way to beat the guy. You just can't continue. Yeah, it's, that was stupid. And then for comics, I read Runaways are the best comics for the month of November. Were Runaways 14, which was, the Runaways are back. They have a different writer. It's Rainbow Rowell. They had a different artist, Christopher Anka. Or Anka, and it just it's mind-blowing and it's great and it's it feels like the old again but carrying on it is so good it's so it, it just so superb more about character moments it is a slow story but it's all about the characters and I absolutely love it then X-Men Red number 10 which also about characters and this one is Jean Grey is now in control of her own team and she has like a different mission statement. She's like, I'm going to save everybody, not just mutants, you know, and all this crazy stuff is going on. And it's Cassandra Nova is the main enemy for this one. She's getting help from Namor. They have these cool new suits. She has this new team. You have Honey Badger. You have X-23, Laura Kinney, which was also kind of the all-new Wolverine or was all-new Wolverine. And then you have this other girl that like can hack. I don't know what her name is. Maybe she should be called Hack. I don't know. Then this one dude that's kind of like Hulkish, but he's Wakandan. He's legit. Really solid team. Of course, Kurt Wagner, my favorite, uh, which he has a beard, so it kind of weirded me out. But he's a handsome bearded elf. Anyways, uh, yeah, it's a solid team, so that one's cool. Captain America 5, and this one's epic because he's taking on Taskmaster. Taskmaster, you know, he's the master of mastering people's techniques. So he's mishmashing all these different techniques he's stolen from people. And he's just messing Cap up. He even poisoned him. And Cap's like, I gotta dig deep. I gotta go dig deep because I gotta go save Sharon Carter. You know, and he does his thing. Hawkman 6. Hawkman 6 is phenomenal because it has a wonderful bromant, bromance moment. Okay? And love the bromance in there because... He meets with Dr. Ray Palmer, the Adam or Captain. Is it Captain Adam or just the Adam? Anyways, he meets with him, finds some artifact that he's trying to find in the microverse and stuff. And so it's pretty legit. And just like they have this awesome moment uh, that just totally touches me right here and, and was loved it. Star Wars 57. So cool because they're like stuck on this planet. And it's kind of like this, this village... They have this uh, weird system going on, you know, it's like kind of, it feels a little communist, a little socialist, you know, going on. You're like, hey, you do work, you earn this, you do this, you get that, right? So you see Han Solo and he's like, 
What do I do? What do I got to do to get a beer around here? And so he's over there chopping wood, like, shirtless and stuff. And then there's the leader of, like, this village. You know, he's, like, teaching Luke some fighting skills and stuff. It's it's pretty legit. And, and that guy has a daughter, and he's kind of, like, flirting with the daughter. It's pretty crazy. And then Leia's making all these plans. It's it's super. Then Batman 58. Now, Batman 59, I want to say that it was the issue in which he was going off against Professor Pig. And you're like, wow, this is messed up. He can't hear. Like, Batman's like, he's trying to focus. And he's like, I, I feel like I'm bleeding and I can't hear. And there's all these weird things going on. And, like, certain senses aren't working. And he's like, all the things that he's learned, essentially, like, from his masters, you know. He's, like, using all these skills to, like, break loose and stuff. And you're like, oh, man, it's so sick. And then you're like, oh, is this a mind def? I don't know. Like, it was so freaking awesome. I think that's what it was. And then American Carnage, which is a political thriller. You have this one lady. She is, uh, I think she's in the FBI or CIA or something like that. And anyway, she had a partner that was killed by this, uh, like, white nationalist or something, right? And she thinks he's connected to this politician because her partner was really deep into figuring out that this dude was involved with some white nationalist stuff and he's a politician and stuff. And so she's like, I think he took him out because he was on to him, but I need help. And so she goes to this other dude that used to be an agent, but he was kicked out. And so now he's on drugs and stuff. And she's like, I need you to go undercover, but this is off the books. You know, I'm just going to pay you my own cash, I think, or something like that. And so he's like, get into his system, figure out what he's all about and everything like that. It's crazy. It's cool. It's, it's nuts. So yeah. Then you have cover number three, which is just crazy because... This is essentially Bendis turned Mac into a real character and turn him into like, oh yeah, he does covers and that's what he does as an artist. And then this girl recruits him to be a spy and then meets with this other artist that is a spy. And then he's like talking crap to him like, oh yeah, you know, like this dude beat him up. This dude beats him up because he's like, I know you're a spy and all kinds of stuff. Tell me everything you know. And he's like, you know what, dude, I don't know anything. You know, but I used to respect you, but to be honest, like, I think your art is amazing, but your story is trash. Like, you know, if this guy, though, this legend wouldn't be like this, though. This legendary artist wouldn't be like this, though, or this legendary writer. And so, yeah, it's, it's, it's crazy. It's nuts. So, yes, that was it for my month for November. So, uh, tell me what you think about it. That's it for me. Talk nerdy to me. Remember, you can check all of our stuff out. At TNT on the show, that's Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Tumblr, YouTube, of course, and our website. It's all TNT on the show. So, love it. <laughs>